Ronnie Green is the Harlan Vice Chancellor within UNL's Institute of Agriculture and Natural Resources. You may recall the Institute is in the process of hiring more than 30 new tenure track faculty members in high impact areas. We sat down with Ronnie towards the end of December to talk about INR's outlook for 2014, including the recent hiring initiative. You know, we, we were pretty lucky, I think, uh, amongst uh, land-grant universities in agriculture, which for the last several decades haven't really been in a great hiring mm -hmm. mode, or at least in growth mode, I would call it. Uh, and we were able to be in that position uh, this past year. We spent a lot of time planning for how and where we needed to expand our faculty um, across all sectors of ag and natural resources mm -hmm. at the University of Nebraska. And we're fortunate enough to be in a position where earlier this year we started recruiting 36 new tenure track faculty members. And by new, I mean growth, mm -hmm. additional, uh, above and beyond where we'd been. Um, so really the first time in 40 years we've had the opportunity to grow like that and grow our faculty resource. So 2013 was the year we really got after that yeah. and uh, sought out the best applicants. Uh, I think we ended the year with about 30 of those hired and uh, brought into the picture already with the remainder to be finished up in early 2014. 2014 brings a new round of that, so to speak, or just the finishing? Uh, we'll finish okay. that, that round of hiring. We'll, I, we'll actually end up with, I think, no, closer to 40 mm -hmm. uh, new faculty that will have resulted from that uh, hiring initiative. Um, we'll finish hiring the last few of those in the, the early part mm -hmm. of the spring in 2014. But then behind that will come the prioritization of another wave of growth okay. in our faculty that we anticipate to be able to hire another 20. Um, that's our target mm -hmm. um, in 2015. So the 2014 will bring the challenge yeah. of who are they going to be right. and what are the areas going to be that we're going to emphasize. So if uh, by the end of 2015 we end up with 50 new faculty, Mm -hmm. um, 55, 60 new faculty out of both those hiring initiatives. That will be a huge, huge thing for us for decades to come uh, here the, at the university. Right. One of the things that, that agriculture is really focused on right now and has been for the last year or two is trying to get a new five-year farm bill. There are obviously multi-components to a farm bill, and one of them is research. From the university standpoint, describe the importance of, of getting that component in a new five-year farm bill. Uh, well, the, re the research title mm -hmm. of the Farm Bill is certainly very important to the university system around the country, especially important to us here at Nebraska because of the emphasis and priority on agricultural mm -hmm. research by the university. Um, so there are, there are a couple of key components of that uh, authorization of the Farm Bill. The hatch funds that fund our experiment stations throughout the state and our, our greater research enterprise and the Institute of Ag and Natural Resources are part of that authorization. Smith Lever funds that fund cooperative extension throughout the state, significant part of that authorization. And then on top of that, the competitive grants program that fund competitive research proposals um, in USDA and the National Institute of Food and Agriculture are part of that authorization and we yeah. compete for and receive quite a large number of those competitive right. grants. So all of that's wrapped up in the authorization yeah. of the Farm Bill and of course appropriations that then come on top of that. So we're watching that carefully to uh, hopefully mm -hmm. here to see that yeah. happen um, uh, and come back to us. And then we're also very concerned about the future of that funding, the long-term future of um, of appropriations for agricultural research, extension, and education at the federal level that have been declining for a long time uh, over the last couple of decades historically. You'll have a Huberman lecture coming up uh, January 14th. Can you just give me a quick outline of what that entails? Well, that's the topic, really, of that lecture. So uh, coming up here shortly, uh, in our next Huberman lecture, we've invited in a panel to discuss really what's the future of the agricultural research, education, and extension enterprise in the U.S.? Mm -hmm. Where are we competitively against uh, growing interest and investments in China and Brazil, and particularly, or in particular in those areas? Uh, so that panel includes uh, former Secretary of Agriculture Dan Glickman. Uh, it includes Kathy, uh, Kathy Wotecki, mm -hmm. who is the current Undersecretary of USDA, 
that oversees all of that part of the uh, department, the research, education, and economics branch of USDA, and Phil Pardee, who is a University of Minnesota ag economist, who's done a lot of work looking at globally where the U.S. enterprise is. And our dialogue that, that evening will be, what's the future look like? What are the discussions at the national level about growing that enterprise, which is really what we need to do to meet the needs ahead? for agricultural innovation. Uh, so it'll be an interesting panel and dialogue that night, January 14th, uh, it's at seven in the evening uh, in the Nebraska East Union uh, here on East Campus. And uh, finally, the Rural Futures Institute has a new director, Chuck Schroeder. Uh, just give me a quick overview of what you think he might be able to not only bring to the Institute, but also to the state. Well, we, we, we were very, very happy about having recruited and successfully brought to uh, the University of Nebraska Chuck Schroeder, who is no stranger to Nebraska, uh, native of southwest Nebraska, the Palisade area of the state. Um, grew up in the ranching business and then has held a number of positions, leadership positions nationally in agriculture and here in Nebraska, was the Department of Ag Director here at one point in his career, was with the University of Nebraska mm -hmm. Foundation earlier. He was the CEO of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association and most recently was in Oklahoma City as the, the head of the Cowboy uh, Museum and Hall of Fame. And uh, Chuck brings a very interesting mix of talents and background to us to build the Rural Futures Institute as its founding director. Uh, started December 1st, so he's been on board now about a month. And, um, and we're looking forward to great leadership from him as that new institute grows, develops, and comes out of the gate, so to speak, to address rural sustainability long term. Again, the next Hurman Lecture takes place January 14th at 7 o'clock in the Nebraska East Campus Union and features a panel including former U.S. Secretary of Ag Dan Glickman. The event is open to the public and free to attend. More information can be found at hewermanlectures.unl.edu.